In September 2011, nearly 11 years ago now, I had solar panels installed on my house. At the time, solar in the UK was quite new. There was a push from government to invest in renewable energy, and I had recently moved house to somewhere I was likely to stay for a long time. The government promoted a feed-in tariff scheme, which they agreed to pay for the next 25 years. It turned out to be very popular and was quickly watered down. The scheme was scrapped a few years ago, so it isn't available for new solar installations. I used a local installer to install 14 sharp solar panels. These were 240 watts each and only 14% efficient, a long way from today's 400 watt panels and 20% efficiency levels. 14 panels was the maximum I could get on my roof, giving a total of 3.3 kilowatts of DC solar power. Along with the panels, a Sunny Boy 3000 HF grid tie inverter was fitted. This provides up to 3 kilowatts of power from the 3.3 kilowatts maximum the year panels can produce. At the time, I paid nearly £10,000 for the installation, which is about double what it would cost today. So you can see how dramatic the drop in solar panel prices has been in just 10 years. You could say it was a bit of a gamble. I didn't know how well the solar would perform. However, the government incentive was very attractive and also tax free, which meant that I would be better off buying a solar system than putting money into a bank account, plus the added bonus of free electricity. Since installation, my solar panels have produced over 35 megawatt hours of electricity. Here's a table of the energy produced by my installation. The red areas are the higher generation, whilst green are lower. As I'm based in the UK, it's no surprise that our winter months of November, December and January are the worst performing. However, until I looked at this data, I didn't expect May to have the highest monthly totals. This is the same data shown as a total generation per month over the last 11 years. The trend line shows how symmetrical the UK seasons can be. When my installation was made, an estimate of 2,884 kilowatt hours of electricity was given. This was based on the scientific models available at the time. The dotted line on this graph is where the original estimate is. I'm pleased that I've regularly beaten this estimate by over 10% every year. I've not had a single year which has been lower than the estimate, and 2022 looks to be on track as well. When the solar panels were installed, there were lots of scaremongers saying that their panels wouldn't last, that they would degrade and be useless in five or 10 years time. But I'm pleased to report that after ne nearly 11 years of being out in the UK weather, I can see no discernible drop in performance. Looking at a cumulative generation chart, the line is almost straight without any curve down as you would expect if the panels were degrading over time. It's no surprise that my best performing day was in the summer. On the 4th of June 2013, I generated 24.171 kilowatt hours of electricity. On my worst winter days in December, I'm lucky to generate even half a single kilowatt hour. I mentioned that the feed-in tariff scheme was very popular, and that's because in the beginning the scheme appeared too good to be true. It's likely the government underestimated the uptake of solar in the UK, and it did spark a boom and bust cycle of new solar installation companies appearing and then going bankrupt a few years later, when the scheme was withdrawn. Back in 2011, I had a contract price of 43.3 pence per kilowatt hour for all the solar that I generate, even if I just use it myself. This is just the money for generating the electricity. Alongside this, you also get a smaller payment for exporting that electricity to the grid at 3.1 pence per kilowatt hour. Now back in 2011, smart meters, which could actually measure export, didn't really exist in the UK. They were just starting to be rolled out nationwide, and that rollout is still continuing today. As the export couldn't be accurately measured, the scheme assumed that 50% of everything you generate would be exported, even if it wasn't. And the best bit, it was all tax free. And they did generate. For the first six months after installation, they bought me in a income of £318. This was over the 2011 winter period. From April 2012, the rates increased again, and that year I received £1,485, or just over £123 per month. Every year since, the rates have increased, culminating in a price in 2022 of 60.23 pence per kilowatt hour, after a massive 7.5% jump due to the inflation levels in the UK. After nearly 11 years, my solar installation has returned me £18,655. Obviously, I did invest the £10,000 at the start, but that's still over £8,500 tax-free. 
My pay payback period, if we exclude savings on my electricity bills, was just over six years. This is also similar to receiving an interest rate of 5.8% for the past 11 years tax-free. So if we extrapolate what may happen in the future using the historic average value of 3% growth per year, after the 25-year contract finishes in 2036, the income per kilowatt hour could be over 90 pence. This would have generated a massive total income of nearly £55,000, but I have another 14 years to wait for that money to arrive. Now I don't want this video to appear to be gloating about the money. I was just lucky to be in the right place at the right time with funds available to have the panels installed. If I had chosen to move house in the last few years, I would have lost the rights to the solar income, so I wouldn't have actually broken even. It's not all been trouble free either. In June 2016, the solar system went down and I lost 10 days of income whilst a repair was made. One of the MC4 connectors on the solar panels had failed. I've also lost three days due to a grid outage when the local substation blew up and was replaced. Other, th other than that though, the system has worked great. Hopefully I've not jinxed it now by saying that. So far, I've not mentioned the free electricity I'm also receiving from the solar panels. Obviously this can be, can be seen as a saving against your monthly electricity bills. I don't currently use all the energy I generate, but I hope so soon with a really large battery storage project. So that's my journey with solar energy. Over 35 megawatt hours of electricity generated from a small three kilowatt inverter and panels. If you don't currently have solar, but have a roof space or a garden area to install them on, I'd recommend looking to see if you could save on your energy costs, or even just do your bit for renewables and self-generation, particularly with battery storage. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe to the channel if you're interested in solar, and also my future big battery build. See you soon.